Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Namaskaram. Pranakam. Welcome to the Pawn Sanjaya Sangam Zoom show on this Sunday, 8th of September 2024. This is our episode number 138, and we propose a couple of more shows as we go along. Well, we all take birth as a small child. We grow up to become young boys and girls. Chronological advancement make, bring, takes us to men and women. Gradually, we grow into older men and older women. Despite the chronological advancement that we make, there is an element of child always lurking into all of us. Who does not want to become a child? Given an opportunity, we all want to become childlike. We don't want to be childish. We would like to become childlike. But is it possible to go back to child stage? Definitely not. But then, is this a way to connect to the child within us? Maybe yes. A guest speaker joining us this evening from Bengaluru, Dr. Sudha Srikant, to explain to us the modus operandi of connecting the child within us. Welcome to the show, Dr. Sudha Srikant. The last we shall begin the show with a prayer followed by the guest introduction. And after the guest, we go take on all her competition. We'll have an open session. And we all can put our views, observations, comments, feedback, and even ask questions to the guest. We'll be more than happy to answer. And finally, we'll wrap it up with a summary and word of thanks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's kick start the show. Coming up first is a prayer. Srini the Aditya standing by to sing the prayer for us. Srini the kindly unmute the microphone and go ahead. In the Edam Sendralum, in the Mugam Pasalum, in the Edam Sendralum, in the Mugam Pasalum, in the Nitzerriva de Undan Mugame, in the Nitzerriva de Undan Mugame. Sindhaila Vila Yada Vanda Mugame Sindhaila Vila Yada Vanda Mugame Dadan Mugame Yana Nandan Mugame Andara Til Vila Yadum Chandirane Kandale 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 Sundara Mai Terivade Undan Mugame Sundara Mai Terivade Undan Mugame Sindhaila Vila Yada Vanda Mugame Sindhaila Vila Yada Vanda Mugame Guru Nathan Mugame Nana Nandan Mugame Kanan Kadai Ke Talum, Kanan Kadai Ke Talum, Kanan Kadai Ke Talum, Kanan Kadai Ke Talum, Kartinil Nilai Pade Undan Mugame, Sindhai Le Vila Yada, Vanda Mugame, Guru Nathan Mugame, Nandan Mugame Yen the Pirin in the Alum, Yen the Nilay Vandalum, Yen the Pirin in the Alum, Yen the Nilay Vandalum, Yen the Nitune Avadum, the Mugame. Yen the neck to me, Avade, wound and Mugame, and then I am Mugame. 
ஞானானந்தன் முகமே எந்த இடம் சென்றாலும் எந்த முகம் பார்த்தாலும் எந்த இடம் சென்றாலும் எந்த முகம் பார்த்தாலும் எந்தனுக்கு தெரிவது உந்தன் முகமே சிந்தையிலே விளையாட வந்த முகமே சிந்தையிலே விளையாட வந்த முகமே பூருநாதன் முகமே ஞானா நந்தன் முகமே Krishna, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Srinidhi. This is a wonderful rendition of the prayer. We can sit back and get to know the modalities of connecting the style with the new Miss Tenbar guest speaker. Well, moving to the next segment, I'll introduce the guest speaker. Well, introducing Dr. Sudha Srikant would be like giving candlelight to the sun. And then we have a procedure to follow. And for the benefit of the new journalist this evening, introduction becomes necessary. This is Vijay Lakshmi Nagarajan would do the honors. Vijay Lakshmi Madam, kindly go ahead. I can't get any bongo. My commute, ah, uh, yes. Good evening to all the Tapovan Sandhya Sangam members. Today, our chief guest, Dr. Sudha Shrikant, is one of the well-known and regular speakers of our Sangam. Her speeches are always very interesting, impressive and informative and also the topics are thought-provoking ones. Today, she has selected one such novel topic that is connecting with our inner child. As we all know, everyone has golden memories of childhood. Many a times, these memories contain good, bitter, innocent, funny experiences, hurts, traumas, and emotional wounds. These experiences are collectively responsible for our behavioral changes in the later stage. Today, Madam is going to tell us how to connect with our inner time to have a compassionate and understanding relationship with ourselves. I extend my cordial welcome to Dr. Sudha to our show on behalf of our members. Now it is time to introduce Dr. Sudha to our members. To know more about her, let us see her profile page. Just a minute. Profile of Dr. Sudha Srinam, uh, Srikant, sorry. By grace of God, blessings of her parents and gurus, Sudha Srikant has a doctoral degree in the discipline of human development from SNDT Women's University. With the blessings of Goddess Saraswati, Sudha has had a rich and successful career of over three decades, specializing in early childhood education and emotional intelligence as an educationist, teacher, trainer, mentor, counselor, and content developer. Being a meticulous, passionate, and multifaceted professional, Sudha has also been an entrepreneur, setting up a daycare center at Tane, which ran successfully for two decades. The trust of the parents has garnered all along and has established beautiful long-lasting relationships. Sudha had the opportunity to present many papers at national and international conferences and has won many accolades. She has also been a keynote speaker and has conducted many online and offline trainings for our children, teachers, parents, and professionals. A passionate teacher at heart, she is an eternal learner. She loves sports, driving, adventure, traveling, music, and reading. Though friendly, loves her time of solitude too. 
Presently, her husband Srikant and she have dedicated their lives towards compassionate service to mankind. An honorary advisor to Navjeevan Blind Relief Center and full-time consultant to Enable India. Her area of work involves providing training in communication and life skills for persons with vision impairment. She offers online training in spoken English and life skills for the blind and has trained over 250 students across the country and is mentoring senior executives and training who are uh, sorry and trainers who are visually impaired at Enabled India. Sudha's motto is life is a gift and we need to live it to the fullest. Blessed with the twins, a son and a daughter, their parenting has been a blessing too, turning every challenge into an opportunity. Walking on the path of spirituality, she has surrendered to Sri Venkateswara, an epiphany that turned her life to embrace Vanaprastha. She seeks the blessings of the divine, uh, sorry, <coughs> divine and elders to continue this journey as long as possible. So, with that, let me welcome her once again and request her to take over the stage. Thank you, Thank you Madam, for the wonderful introduction. I know, great one. In fact, uh, every time Sudha speaks on the show, I keep on asking her if there is any change in her profile. Well, she is one person who keeps on upgrading herself, updating herself, and adding feathers to the cap. So much so that her cap is now full of feathers, it's adding feathers onto the feathers. And it's now time for Sudha to take over, ladies and gentlemen. As usual, we'll keep the mic in mute status so that we don't disturb thought process of the speaker. On her completions, we'll have an open session. Dr. Sudha Srikan, the floor is all yours now. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for that. Namaskaram. Namaskaram. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Coming back to Tapovan over and over again, since I think September or October 2021, online for the shows, I feel every time is a blessed opportunity. It is a homecoming. Uh, and I've interacted with most of you at the Poen too. Uh, for that lovely rendition, the invocation, it has just given all of us power, especially me power to take on a subject that is uh, very interesting. It's very dear to my heart. And I hope I can do justice to uh, what, how we can really connect with our inner child. Today, uh, along with the Tapova Nights, uh, we also have uh, some of my friends who've joined from uh, across. I, th I, I see one of my friends who's presently in Germany. So she's also joined. Uh, one from Kerala. Uh, many of my students who are either, uh, I mean, as part of Enable India courses, they have also joined. So there may be times as and when I'm sharing a slide I'll go on to detailing of explaining everything that is there if it is a visual, because we do have uh, our guests today who've joined, some of whom are visually impaired and they may require that little extra uh, time for me to explain it. So thank you all for your patience and understanding. Well, connecting with our inner child. I'm just going to uh, first, Share this, just a minute. Share this PPT of, yeah, I think it is visible to all. So we are going to connect with our inner child. But before that, I would like to just ask you, how many of you have forgotten, forgotten that child within you? Do you think that there is a child, inner child within you that keeps popping up, raising its hand time and again to say, hey, I want to talk with you. Hey, please, please give me some attention. So this is a question. Sometimes we will have interaction. So this first question that I have for all of you 
is do you think that there is an inner child now some of us are 20 plus i mean most of us are 20 plus some in the range of 20 to 30 some 30 to 40 some 80 and above also so we have a very wide range of audience age group that is 20 plus and each one of us i think have an inner child but i am asking you do you think you have an inner child just the floor is open to anybody to answer you can raise your hand and anybody do you think you have an inner child yes uh, saraswati madam yes see whenever i see a ball coming towards me you know i feel like kicking you know so that is that's where i feel yes there's a child inside me yes absolutely absolutely thank you so much for that opening statement of saying that yes there is an inner child in fact there are some memories that i would like to share uh, it was during our trip to family trip to um, uh, to australia a few years ago many years ago and at that time uh, when we were walking up the opera you know there uh, at sydney i didn't really walk up the stairs i ran up the stairs and at that time this very dear friend of mine uh, he mentioned that look at her she's that child within her is is still so alive and there are multiple times even post that in fact recently i had gone with my uh, uh, colleagues and students uh, the candidates of uh, the foundation course the visually impaired we went to a fun world over here at bengaluru where there are plenty of amusement park rides and water sports they thought like i am a good like double their age and uh, they were not sure that when i'm going to accompany them uh, is it going to be as much fun but after the trip was over they said ma'am we felt so good with you around you explained everything and you not only explained you enjoyed every ride with us it was so much of fun so that's when i realized that yes the child within me is so much alive and it is it is nice to connect it is very refreshing it is very energetic to connect with the child within us so with that i'm just going to start off by saying we have just spoken about yes you know there is this inner child but what do we exactly mean by this inner child there is a particular visual that shows uh two people one on the left is a gentleman who is riding a scooter and in the speed he is enjoying it so much that there is fun and there is smiling and even his body language is showing that he is really enjoying the ride and to the right there is a lady who's sitting on a similar type of scooter uh, back erect everything a very straight forward Uh, there's a very gentle rationed smile on her face where she is not really enjoying it a lot more it seems a lot more diminished as compared to the first person now weirdly what happens is that the older we get the more the inner child comes out that means the more and more we start growing older the lesser and lesser the inner child is there within us and we start sort of losing that inner child more because of social conditioning probably or the environment or the responsibilities the challenges or it could also be some of the adversities that come along our way which make us lose that inner child because maturity takes over and we think in order to be mature we need to uh, forget or just conceal our inner child 
So when we are talking about inner child, it really means recognizing that our behavior as adults stems from our childhood experiences. Addressing these unmet needs, sometimes, you know, as what uh, uh, Madam uh, spoke about, you know, uh, in the introduction about our childhood experiences, it could be pleasant, it could be unpleasant, some could be traumatic, some could be bitter. So addressing these unmet needs is very critical for our future life. And sometimes we may have to reparent ourselves. I'll be talking more about what we mean by reparenting as we go along. It's also a journey of self-discovery. It's an inward journey. How did we come so far? What has made us the way we are? It's not just our truthful lives. It's not just our adult life but it is also the childhood which has made the foundation of who we are, the experiences that we have had in the past. Now, this is also a space where we can be grown-ups as well as a child, providing unconditional self-love, self-compassion, and self-support. Now, with this understanding of what it is to connect with our inner child, I am going to take you through a video, okay? And this is about a five-minute video. I'll just explain it. This is where in a train there are people who are traveling, okay? And this is not in India. This is somewhere in the European country. And as they are sitting, so it's not crowded like how we have our trains in India. This is more spaced out. You can see like how the metros are. It is something similar to, to that. And how is it generally? I mean, you may even visualize yourself whenever you have traveled as an adult in a train. So sometimes we are very straight-faced. Uh, we may just... Uh, not look at anybody we may look out of the window or we may just doze off and even if we see somebody because we don't know that person we may not even smile we have a very straight look this is a very typical scenario whenever uh, we visualize a, a let's say a scene of a travel so now along this uh, train journey, I am going to pause at a particular point and then take this further. So with that, I'm just so oh, sorry. I need to share it. There may not be much of sound, okay? Right now, they're just showing a track and now slowly you can hear the train or the tram. Now there is a picture of the train in which there are people different types of people who are seated but with a very serious look. Some are frowning, someone's got a cold so she's cleaning her nose, someone's thinking about and looks like to be worrying, someone's just looking down, one lady is looking at a poster in which there is a couple who's got very intimate and she's looking away from it. The train stops. 
there are some people who get off and there are some who get in and yet all sullen faces very stern they're looking at each other they may have some book to read in their hands and then there is this one man who just comes and he sits and he's got such a broad smile very broad smile he looks around the smile is getting bigger and bigger he is laughing to himself it may seem that he's gone mad to others but he just starts laughing at a joke he can't control his <laughs> laughter Oh my god you can hear his loud laughter <laughs> Now there is one lady who is sitting next to him she is looking away and she is smiling very little na huh? very wryly she is smiling <laughs> the laughter is so contagious that there are others who started giggling <laughs> even the lady who was sleeping no she also woke up and she is also laughing Oh, there are many others who have started laughing loudly now. <laughs> It seems to be such a big joke now. The whole compartment is laughing loudly. Okay. and now the train comes to another station now everyone just keeps quiet and there is one gentleman who gets into the train they are shaking their whole body and laughing loudly someone is even crying because of all the tears that are coming out and then they keep quiet there is this one very serious type of gentleman who gets in okay he has a book in his hand and all the others are trying to control their laughter he doesn't get place to sit so oh he moves behind and he sits he's wondering what is happening everyone's just controlling their laughter he has such a stern face and now the whole train burst out laughing now i'm just going to stop this share what did it make you feel with all this that you just saw you heard did it make a difference did you feel like laughing i'm sure some of you were laughing or you may have at least started smiling if not laughing right so not only was it contagious but this is also yeah thank you liti for that smiling face and uh, meet modi also for having given that expression that is really wonderful very encouraging also so this is if we are able to just connect you know just be the child so if we have to uh, describe who a child is a child is someone who is playful very very joyful in a sense 
vulnerable, looking for attention many times, wants that comfort, wants to be loved, and at the same time, very spontaneous. So there are times when you may have a guest at home and uh, like a child. Here, when we are talking about a child, we are referring to, let's say, definitely less than 10 years. But we can look at even a five-year-old just for an example. And then, or even younger, the child, if the child is not comfortable, the child and you ask the child, okay, do you want to sing a song or do you want to, you know, show some things, uh, some drawing to this uncle or auntie who's come? The child may just say, if the child is not in a mood, the child may say, I don't like this person. The child does not say it with an intent of hurting the person. The child just says because the child is not up to it at that time. Very, very spontaneous. And as we grow along, as we grow up, we start getting conditioned and definitely become more what is socially acceptable. Okay. And we start getting disciplined. In a way, it is very, very nice, but still it leads sometimes the way it is said or the way we go through that experience as a child. Today, we understand that whatever happened in terms of being uh, parented was good for us. Definitely, we will all agree. But at that time, it was a scar. It was a trauma, sometimes a very serious trauma which is still taking time to, to heal. Just a minute. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to be talking about the inner child work, how we can connect with our inner child. And this is not about anyone else. It is about us. So we have to take a peek. We have to try to dive into the pool, which is a very deep pool. Even if you don't know swimming, it is okay. Because here, we are going to try and dive in. We are going to try and explore what we have hidden for so many years. And that has helped us, nurtured us to be the way we are. So the visual is showing two palms when you hold it together as if you're holding something and there is that little child and this child is us. So you have to try and imagine yourself as that little child whom you're going to sort of cuddle, love. You're going to nurture that child. You're going to try to speak to that child and you're going to be playful towards that child. And then discover something which probably was hidden for very, very long. And how does this work? Basically, understanding how our past trauma affects our present behavior. Yeah, we may think that, you know, there uh, maybe we are short tempered, we, we are very easily irritable. Maybe there are some traits in us which we find very difficult to change and that we say, this is a habit and this is how I am. But that comes with its own repercussions. It comes with its own drawbacks because the other side of 40, we do start having so many ailments, right? Some which are picked up on the test and some on the test, it just doesn't show up. So we don't know what the reason could be. Sometimes it could just be something as a trauma which has not been attended to. It may not be as serious as a trauma, but it can also be something which we are holding uh, grievance. We are very unforgiving about. Okay. So understanding how our past trauma affects the present behavior. This is what an inner child healing would help us in. It also helps in developing healthy coping mechanisms. How do we cope up with situations? 
right? And in earlier sessions also, I think I've spoken about mindfulness, I've spoken about dealing with intense feelings, ikigai, many, many other uh, uh, like topics I have spoken about. But somewhere down the line, they seem little related because emotions play a very important role. We all are beings filled with emotions, our limbic brain, okay, which has been a very fundamental part of who we are. Limbic brain is the where the emotional brain is. And it's covered by the pre prefrontal cortex, which is our thinking brain. And over the years, we give so much importance to that thinking brain and that pre prefrontal cortex that we forget our inner child, right? So it is a time where we can connect and by connecting, it does help in healthy coping mechanisms. Reconnecting to passions. In fact, in our last uh, talk, I think when I spoke about uh, picking the bucket list, I think there were topics where, you know, suggestions that, you know, you list down what are the things that you had always wanted to do and you didn't get an opportunity to do. So reconnecting with your passion, it can be taking just uh, taking up some dance classes or maybe um, painting. Yeah, it could be something like piano classes. It could be as simple as even kite flying. You can go out when it's a windy evening, windy afternoon no trees around because I know in, at Tapo when there are plenty, plenty of trees. But something which you have never done and you would want to do, you had wanted to do, just reconnect with those passions and the dreams and the talents that you have put aside. Especially many of the homemakers, in the way we have uh, grown up, I'm talking about, you know, uh, those who belong to the two, three, four, five decades back your condition that you have to give up some things you have to compromise on a few things so that your attention is towards your family all that is fine and we take those roles very very seriously and we have done it all but somewhere down the line it is possible that deep down there could be that passion it still is wanting to be rekindled. It still is saying that, hey, I'm still alive. I'm still there. Connect with me. So that is what over here we mean by reconnecting with uh, two passions. And something that I would like to share with others who don't know what uh, what is life at Tapovan. Tapovan Senior Citizens uh, Living is at uh, Coimbatore, which is in South India, in Tamil Nadu. And there... Uh, in the senior citizens living, there is a community kitchen. There are so many plants around, rich greenery, vibrant colored flowers, beautiful pea fowls here and there, just almost dancing around. And that is the beauty. And at Tapovan, uh, all the festivals are celebrated. The evenings are full of, uh, you know, there are some chantings that go on. There's a lot of community living, uh, so much of joy, so much of peace. So that is something which I want to share with our other audience who don't know Tapawan. At the same time, all this is the external world. There is a deep down internal world which we have forgotten and that is why we are trying to reconnect with that. Now, uh, when we're talking about healing and uh, playful discovery where the inner child uh, work happens, it also helps in improved emotion regulation. That means we are able to deal with our emotions a lot better. We are less irritable rather than reacting. We respond. Reacting is spontaneous again, without any thinking. It is very impulsive. But with inner child work, you know that the inner child 
uh, the unmet needs are like sort of you know uh, dealt with so you are able to regulate your emotions a lot better and this in turn helps in increasing our self esteem self compassion and compassion towards others okay so this slide that i am just that i've just put up it shows a child and there is a a hand on top of the child's head and this child is placing its hand on another child and that child is placing the hand on another child so it's a very beautiful visual and uh, the words or the quote by wendy jade says an environment that is not safe to disagree in is not an environment focused on growth it's an environment focused on control i'm going to repeat this sentence an environment that is not safe to disagree in is not an environment focused on growth it's an environment focused on control now most of those who belong to the generation earlier generation i'm not talking about uh, post 2000 post 2000 there are a different category itself all of them but those who are much uh, earlier the parenting styles were very different today the parenting styles are very different so i'm talking about any time whether it is the present or it is in the past wherever there is an environment where you are not allowed to speak you may ask some questions but you are told that you cannot ask these questions you just have to follow tamil la neriya vaati ketirukom neriya va sonnarudhu kekkanam questions kekka koodadu so there has been a transition i'm sure those of you who are there at the kovan you will agree with me that you would say that you have always listened to your parents always you never asked also questions those who are maybe your children started asking questions but maybe you didn't have the answers so the questions were there and still the answers were not there that would probably be the generation i belong to because whenever we ask some questions it would be it is that way but we at least dared to ask questions <laughs> probably the generation above never asked those questions because they didn't feel the need to and sociologically the structure was also very very different then that means the generation next generation that means maybe those who are uh, in the 90s born between the 90s and 2000 onwards when they start asking these questions if you don't give them proper answers then then it's they try to find their own answers and they are not ready they, many of them become rebels some at that time also when we didn't get the answer would have become rebels so wherever there are control freaks in the house either you have the children who are very timid or they become rebels they get into extremes most of the times and here when i'm saying are not allowed to ask questions it's not one or two it is like a hitler type regime where everything is directed by one person and everyone in the house has to listen to it and you cannot disagree to that so then independent thinking innovation and uh, wanting to do things by yourself your self confidence so many things tend to get hampered if this is continued for a very very long time and the same approach because you think that this is the best approach the same approach may follow every time till the pattern is changed right many times even uh when the children are playing they will use the same tone as what their parents are talking and if you and i were to look back there would be times when 
there was that controlling environment and we felt bad about it. We felt we were not given a chance to talk about it. We were not accepted, our views were not accepted. If such a seed is sown deep inside, believe me, it makes its way through crevices in the way we grow up as adults, okay? So agreeing to disagree is a very different new concept. Openness, willingness, at the same time, yes, we are talking about democracy. It's also that it is okay to disagree. This is the rule or this is, let's say, a funda used these days. But it was not the case earlier. Even at times now, if the same uh, control freak uh, is used, uh, the way of parenting is used. Now, again, there are visuals for my VI friends here. There are four visuals. To my top left is about a confused child holding hands on the head. And in her mind, she is, she is looking at an image probably between her parents, the father is walking away and the mother is holding legs and pleading. This is one image. On the right, there is another image where uh, there are two faces to this uh, image. One has a child, I mean, one has a tear and the other is just trying to conceal it. And there is that inner child having a tear in the eye. Then there is a third visual in which the child is, the inner child is closing the eyes, okay? And the parents, probably from a very disturbed background, you know, some harsh uh, talk conversations, maybe between the parents, it could be between other caregivers, okay? And there is a shadow of them, which is in the background. And the child has grown, but the image is still showing that, uh, of, let's say, uh, feeling uh, lonely, feeling unheard, feeling unloved. No, it could be so many things. And on the right, there is again a visual which shows like uh, two people who are uh, facing their backs. I mean, their backs are to each other. They're looking other direction. But the child within them is wanting to connect. So this could be a very classic example, which we can say that we've had some childhood friends or some very close relationships that we've had in our past, where it has gone sad for whatever reasons. You, you don't want to connect because maybe it's the ego that is coming in the way or it is the, you know, the conditioning that we have that why should I give in to it always? Where the inner child is just, just full of fun, full of life, wanting to connect and make friends. So they are too deep down, you know, the picture is uh, showing this. So here we are now going to talk about what are the signs of a wounded child and when, when is it time to connect and reconnect and reconnect more often so that the wound is healed. Now, why are we talking about this healing of the wound also? You may ask that this is something which has happened so many years ago, eons ago. Why should I even bother about it? Well, where is the child? Where is the inner child? Inner child is not out. Inner child is within us. And when we have got this life, whatever is the duration of that cycle, it could be 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 100 years. It is keeping that child alive within us makes a lot of difference. You can see for yourself, those who are in the other side of 70 and 75, when you are a grandparent, you may be a grandparent, the way you play with your grandchildren is very different from what you would do as a parent. Do you agree? You can give me a thumbs up for that. Yes. And why does it happen? 
because and there is again another saying which says that oh, old age is like childhood again so there are two extremes which meet two extremes which are similar two extremes which need more attention which wants the love doesn't want all the materialistic materialistic satisfactions necessarily just wants to be heard wants to be loved wants to be appreciated right so there are signs of a wounded child and what would that be if we find ourselves to be too frustrated or irritable even at mild triggers in something that's not really you don't need to get angry for it and blow things out of proportion but yet if you are doing that it's possible that there is a wounded child within yeah it can be simple things like there is a delay in uh, in the food being served okay very, very simple very simple and it may be just about 5 minutes it may be 10 minutes it need not be blown out of proportion but yet it is there now it could be a part of the personality now why does this happen that is why we are connecting it back to our inner child to see that if there can be some healing done or some relook at the wounded child and how we can come out of it may really help a big reaction to unmet needs okay it could be like uh, it may be someone did not acknowledge your presence not intentionally but still that could be a reason and we may feel think in our mind oh you know she didn't look at me he didn't look at me uh, or he didn't acknowledge my presence it could be very petty reasons but our reaction is very big so why does this happen and why is it blown out of proportion so it's time to see whether there is a wounded child within ourselves sometimes there are childish outbursts mood offs throwing up tantrums and sometimes you also tend to say things which you don't mean it could happen to anybody it could happen to me it could happen happen to you over here we are not talking about one off once in a while once in a blue moon type of situation we are trying to talk about whether this is part of our personality are we this way right now so then it is time to have a relook at what why it is happening complaining that no one understands you or you feel you don't feel heard yeah you may try to express but that expression is not enough for you to convey what you really feel right and then yeah and then you know sometimes there are people you know in our vicinity where every little thing you go on complaining you know there are so many things to be happy about but yet you know you will complain about this is not okay that is not okay that is not okay and then we also tend to in our mind think that oh this person is a complaint box you no know? okay the complaint box has come you know we start creating certain images sometimes okay and again these complaints are very petty very very small it could be overlooked need not be you don't have to pay attention but still our mind and our attention is drawn towards these things where we tend to complain about every little thing then difficulty expressing your feelings and ex explaining why you're upset your mood may be off you may not feel up to it but you're not able to give words to the way you are feeling that is again another sign that possibly maybe the inner child is still asking for attention for you to for you to look at it for you to address it sometimes it's also about a particularly harsh inner critic so this means you're very harsh to yourself you may say that i'm good at nothing no i've you know sometimes it's also like you know i've wasted my life i don't think i've done anything so many things i could do but i did not do and you may club it with a complaint that i did not get an opportunity 
or you may club it with many other things but you're very harsh the same thing you may not say the same if it is to your neighbors or another child in front of you but that to that other child you will be very very compassionate you will say it is okay forget it it's okay i mean i'm sure you're good at something but when it is to yourself you tend to become very harsh you're very critical about yourself fear of abandonment and commitment issues so fear of abandonment that means uh, feel that people will ignore me i will have no one to be with uh, i wonder if like anyone even cares for me or sometimes there may be little tasks that you may want to take up but you're very scared of taking up those commitments because if you take it up and it goes wrong what will people say you're more worried about what will people say rather than taking that commitment and accepting that it is okay to fail everyone is not perfect so because of what people will say we don't tend to take those steps and this can be at any age okay we are talking about the entire spectrum even at 80 85 90 at any time a wounded child within will also show that there is low self esteem and especially when you are with a group when you are talking to people when there is a social get together you may sulk and you may just feel that everyone else around you is really very good but you are somewhere lacking in something so at this point of time i would like to ask you and stopping the share if i were to ask you that 0 to 10 okay this is a rating scale 0 to 10 Okay, this question again is largely only for the tapo and nights because the others, those who've been part of my classes, I think I've asked this question and you've answered. But this is for the tapo and nights. That on a scale of zero to ten, how much do you like yourself? I may have asked this again to y'all also, but I'm asking it again. How much do you like yourself? anyone can raise your hand and i would just randomly 10 out of 10 okay very nice you like yourself 10 out of 10 anyone else would go for it yes saraswati madam ha uh, 10 10 out of 10 okay very nice anyone else 10 of 10 ma'am ah i know shri ram will answer 10 out of 10 yes meet modi Eight out of ten because nobody can give them ten of ten out of ten. So I will give eight out of ten. Okay, you are going to give yourself eight out of ten. Thank you for yeah. that, and I am going to come back after we receive more responses. Anyone else? Anyone else? How much do you like yourself? Okay, even outside of tapo one, anyone can answer. Eight out yes. of ten, ma'am. Okay, uh, uh, madam, your name is Vijay Lakshmi Nagarajan. Vijay, yeah, sorry, Vijay Lakshmi, madam. Uh, uh, you also said, like Meet Modi, you also said eight out of ten. Okay, can we have one more? Yes, Dilip. Eight out of ten, ma'am. Eight out of ten. So we have three eights and three tens on ten. Yes. Any more? Any more responses? Any more? Quickly, you can raise your hand and just share. There's nothing wrong, guy, in these answers. Please, okay, Girija, thank you for putting it on the chat box. Girija is also saying eight out of ten. Uh, anyone else? One more. We'll take one more answer. How much do you like yourself? Ten. Uh, yes. Okay, Nilofa, thank you for joining in. uh nilofar is from uh, kashmir right nilofar yeah. yeah so nilofar is saying 10 on 10 okay now those of you who have said 10 on 10 i'm just going to park your answer 
those of you who have said eight on ten, I'm going to go back to Vijay Lakshmi, Madam. Vijay Lakshmi, Madam, why is it? I mean, uh, you have said eight on ten. Is there any reason why you have not given yourself ten on ten? Yes. Why have you not given yourself ten on ten? Yeah. Why? Uh, but I'm mean, sometimes no, I become short tempered. Okay. That time you irritate me. <laughs> That time it irritates you and you don't like yourself at that time. Okay, thank yeah, you for okay. sharing. Thank yeah. you. Yes, Dilip, why did you give yourself 8 on 10? Dilip, you gave yourself 8 on 10. Why did you give yourself 8 on 10? Uh, in my opinion, ma'am, uh, like uh, uh, I have to learn more. I have to gain experience more. Okay. So I can... Uh, like uh, 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 I think uh, um, I need to know more about me. Okay, that is why you have given yourself eight on ten. Meet Modi. Can not you not tell not. why you have given? Yeah, I the reason we added answer. that. Hmm? Yeah, the reason we added that if we will give ourselves to ten out of ten, then we will in satisfactory zone. Yes, mm -hmm. we have learned. We are satisfied. We are satisfied right now. We don't need much more right now. So that's yeah. the reason we need to mark ourselves to a little bit below, uh, below average point. So we can learn a lot in our life, in our every yeah. uh, kind of things. So we can learn. Okay. Actually. Now, Meet, you are a trainer. You are a trainer from Gujarat. And Meet, your yeah. candidates, your candidates whom you train, okay, now, they are trying their best and if they are not putting in their best effort or they are putting in their best effort but they are not able to reach the optimal, then would you stop liking them? No, definitely I like them because they are doing their work. So, at okay. the case of this, huh, at, the, at this case, I'll, I'll definitely like them. I'll never hate them. Okay, thank you for sharing. Now, Vijay Lakshmi, madam, yes. if your friends or anyone at home, okay, in your family member or anyone at Tapo one tends to get little angry or uh, short tempered, do you love that person less? No, I never show it outside that way. I try to hide it, pretend that I am quite peaceful like that. At home, sometimes no, I have to show my anger. No, that is not, I no, no, that is not my question. My question is someone else is short tempered. Just no. because that let, let's say at home, it can be your child, it can be your grandchild, it can be anyone else in the family uh, mm -hmm. who's short tempered, and just because they are short tempered, will you stop loving them? How much will you love them? Will you love them eight on ten or ten on ten? <laughs> nine. Nine okay, out of is ten. It, is it nine out of ten or is it ten on ten? You will still love them. There's no compromise <laughs> on the love, correct? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, and this is also for Girija. If you would like to share, Girija, if you can talk, why do you love yourself only eight on ten? <clears throat> no, certain uh, shortcomings I would like to overcome, madam, but I'm unable uh -huh. to do. So that time so, that is okay now if someone else has shortcomings in the mm. family or in your circle will you stop loving them no 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 not at all you will not still love them full correct you will yes. love them 10 on 10 yeah correct yeah definitely this, as a mother i definitely <laughs> very I good mind. perfect as a mother you don't mind now yes. you're going to start mothering your inner child <laughs> This no, is no. what it is, and thank you. I thank try you to so show much. more love to them. <laughs> no, so now yeah, we have to yes. also show more life to ourselves, also. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, Sudha. Uh, it, uh, yeah, I was in the common room, so I could not answer that. Yeah, uh, yeah I gave eight out of ten um, because I felt that I could have done much better uh, had I been uh, wanted to do, but somewhere I thought. I was shy or I was thinking what others will think. Somewhere in the line, everything was 
uh, means it was not connecting me so i still feel that i could have done better so uh, and i'm trying to do still okay. <laughs> now girija so, now this question is to you and i know you're spending time with your grandchildren at uh, germ in germany that's absolutely fine so yeah. now now uh, now let's say your grandchildren are not able to do a few things they are not able to uh, cope up maybe in studies or you know as per expectation will you stop loving them yeah. less no absolutely no <laughs> i still love you. myself but uh, i my love myself is no, not now the minute different. you say yeah. but the minute you say but yeah. <laughs> whatever you have said before that gets erased okay yeah. and to to what i'm trying to drive the point here is when it is other people we are ready to give unconditional love there are no yeah. ifs no buts isn't it but when it yeah. comes to us why are we putting these conditions why are we having these restrictions for ourselves this is what i, I mean this is, by uh, this uh, this is i think it is sort of restriction but i felt i would have done it it's not no, that, that i'm not okay. loving my even people. no even but, your children yeah. that this is exactly what i'm trying to tell yeah we because of social conditioning we think yeah, right. that there are certain rules for others and then we stop loving ourselves some way or diminished love and it is not 10 on 10 so this is how we can really relook and ensure that we can connect and we can just say that yes it is okay it's okay that it has not happened you may not be the best version so far you may not be the best uh, version as yet but there is still time and you can do better and it is okay that is what we are going to try okay now i am going ahead to the share thank you sudha so uh, thank you thank you girija and thank you others for the responses now i am just continuing with the yeah presentation sometimes you are also very extremely worried about what people will say and this is what i had already sounded it to you so now we are going to create and we are going to enter a circle of love whether or not others are we feel appreciated or not we are going to start looking at that child within us okay i want you to imagine i want each of you to now imagine a child version of yourself less than 10 years of age so go back to your childhood go back to your childhood each of you were young girls young boys you know and in those days you know most of the times when you were really playing around also in the courtyard or it could be in your society you know go back to that you could be a 6 year old you could be an 8 year old or 5 year old go back to that version of yourself think about the very intense feelings that you have that time could be joyful there could be something which was missing you may have felt neglected you may have felt ignored you may have felt that your parents were partial you may have felt that this was not the right way to do it you may have felt traumatized at times okay so now we are not looking at uh right and wrong okay what we are going to do is we cannot change the past but we can definitely go back to the past and we can be that parent okay so if at all you have had a a a background or let's say in your childhood a particular situation when you felt that amma is giving more attention to that other person the other brother than me amma is giving more attention to you know the younger baby than me amma is not listening to what i have something very interesting to say what happened in school but amma is just busy cooking and not wanting to listen to me they could be very petty things very small you've grown up but that sense of neglect that sense of ignoring may be there in a very very 
minute form in a, it could be a dot you're not going to change that okay you cannot roll back to the past but what you can do is you can become that parent just imagine you be the parent you have a dialogue with that child and say enna kanna what happened you seem to be very worried <laughs> you want to tell me something and then child will say that yes i wanted to say something but you didn't have time only for me if the parent was working you didn't have time at all for me then the parent will say oh, i'm so sorry that you feel that way but i didn't really intend to do that way i didn't intend to make you feel that way you know i had so many responsibilities i had to take care of tata party i had to do this work i had to that work i also you know uh, and there was this little baby also i had to take care of your brother your sister i'm so sorry if you felt that way i didn't mean to ignore you you're my apple of my eye really amma am i the apple of your eye yes of course dear you're so dear to me when you were born i was the happiest person and even now i'm very happy at that moment you may have felt that way and i'm very sorry that you felt that way i didn't intend to make you feel that way so here you're actually having a dialogue with what you would want to hear from your parent i hope i am making myself very clear as i am saying so you're going to that inner child whenever you have felt maybe little you know uh, maybe sad very sad because of the way the parent has been at that had been at that time you may have felt compared you may have felt insulted there would be a lot of guilt so you're just addressing that you're going back to that not blaming your parent for what the situation is now but trying to reparent you become the parent you have the type of dialogue that you think is is really going to help you what you would have wanted to hear at that time from your parent could be your father could be your mother anybody and that one situation which you remember really so clearly very distinctly you remember and when you remember that so clearly it is not about the what they said or you know the words you may not remember you may not remember the situation but you will remember how they made you feel how you felt at that particular point of time so this is the time where you go back and try to heal okay and when we are creating and entering the circle of love after doing the dialogue what you need to do is you can do this self hugging technique and how do you do that i'm going to try and demonstrate and you all can do that sitting in the comfort of your home you're going to move your hand in front all of you move your right hand in front all of you yeah i'm just stopping the share right now for some time your right hand in front your left hand in front you're going to hold both these hands in front. and now stretch it nicely and then your right hand you're going to place it on your left shoulder and your left hand you're going to place it on your right shoulder okay and you're just going to hug yourself this is the dear inner child whom you love so much and you to the best child my darling my sweetheart and just sway in that embrace you love this so much you can hug yourself as much as you want <laughs> till such a time when you feel little you want to be a little off that embrace and then you can keep embracing yourself like this multiple times to just reassure to that inner child that yes you're loved you're cared you're the most beautiful being right
So where do you start? You have to start becoming more and more aware and start listening to yourself. Whenever that voice within is trying to say something, listen. Meditation is a great way, right? To calm yourself down, to be at the present moment. And the new set of caregivers, I just demonstrated now how you can decide to be your own parent. You can reparent, right? Talk to your loved ones having no expectations. So very often as we grow a little older and older and older, we think that uh, I'm only calling all the time. No, he or she is not calling back. You know, we have this expectation. So the best way is drop it if that other person is not calling. I want to call and I want to speak to that person. You can always say that you were on my mind. And these days, technology has eased everything. You can just say that, hey, you were on my mind today. Just for no, no rhyme and reason. I just felt like talking to you. I just felt like sending you a message. So just connect with that person. Reflect what you would do if you weren't worried about what others would think. Very often we get caught up in this roller coaster no what will others think even at 75 80 and 90 even at 100 sometimes if you're thinking that you know what are others going to say i think you're allowing others to have the remote control of your life we need to have the remote control of our life and just stop thinking just think that they were not there then what would you do then that inner child will really creep out and, you know, play its musty, play its mischievousness. And also about always reassuring yourself as a parent that if the child, inner child is asking, am I good? Am I loved? Am I safe? Reassure time and again, time and again, over and over again that, yes, my dear, you're loved, you're safe, you're good, you're very good at whatever. I mean, you've come a very long way. With all your struggles, with all your challenges, with all the adversities, you've really come a very, very long way. So for adults who want to keep learning and growing joyfully, to thrive in the fast-changing world, it might be time to reconnect with your inner child. So with that, I am going to just stop my share and keep the floor open for some question and answer. Thank you, Suza, for the wonderful presentation. And before we open the session, I just want to say something. The questions that you raised about liking oneself or loving oneself, I think it was not properly understood by those who gave themselves resident time. Because it's not about qualification, education, employment, achievement, or bank balance or anything like that. It's just you as an individual, how much you love yourself. If I don't yeah. like myself 100%, if I don't love myself 100%, who else is going to do it? It has to start from me. So the answer always has got to be 10 out of 10, nothing less, nothing more. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well open said. session right now. What are my can we put this all over, please? <laughs> Finally, unmute your mic and give your feedback. Uh, good evening, uh, Sudaji. You see, uh, yes. there is a. Uh, um, Healing uh, therapy in Reiki, you know, it says that those who cannot forgive themselves for various reasons, what has happened in the childhood, they can also help them to come out. This therapy can um, help them to come out of this trauma. You know, they tell them to keep a small photograph, childhood photograph in yours, and you say that you are you are so good, and then I love you so much. Uh, you are very innocent, like that. You know, there's a, a therapy. So I I've, uh, I've done this. So I just would like to share that, sir. So, and one more thing I would like to tell you. Yeah. Uh, see here, you, since you are connected with the education, it's a little serious, you know. So now we are seeing that uh, the um, various, uh, um, like, uh, wrong things are do, happening to the girl child, female child, and of course, male child also, a little bit less. But then, so in all the schools, they can start the self-defense. Instead of teaching them the sports, then dance, music, and all, you know, it's always better that the children should be taught self-defense so that, you know, any time, you know, anyone comes with the wrong intentions, immediately they should be, um, they can give them uh, like a punch or something, you know. So please see you uh, uh, on my behalf. Yeah. Please. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for uh, sharing that. Over here, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just going a step further. What we are trying to do even now, like if even if it is about self-defense and other things, that's something which has to keep going on. Uh, even in the educational space, schools have started like, you know, martial arts. There are a lot of things where we are talking about uh, how you can be comfortable with a touch and not comfortable with a touch. I'll go a step further and I will say it all starts with upbringing. That is true. Honestly, it all starts with upbringing. It all starts with the parenting styles, no, even, the, way, uh, the way we value, you know, what you and I today, I mean... Uh, Today, when we are seeing crimes at such an alarming rise, uh, in those days, crimes were not so much. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say crimes were not there. It is just that, of course, media was not there so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, the crimes did exist. But right now, it is blown beyond proportion also. And because the media is there, we are listening to more and more and more of the same thing over and over again, which is bombarding and playing its role in our mind. Okay, there are multiple things. Definitely, thank you so much for that. And wherever possible, we will try to uh, share it. And there are bodies who are uh, doing it. Uh, so in, uh, in my school also, uh, I had uh, written to my, like the old school like, where I studied. And also, I am in Gujarat now. So in Gujarat yeah. also, I have spoken to many schools about right. using the martial arts, you know, for children. Yes. Yeah, yes. Thank you so yes. much. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, any more questions? about whether we need to connect with our inner child it is is it meaningful and and just keep the smile on remember that guy you know who came in the train he just smiled he just laughed he just created that that buzz and happiness and it just changed happiness yes happiness infectious. is absolutely happiness is infectious it is smiles are infectious it is also about just greeting each other and See, in Western countries, no, even when you go across, when you're walking on the street, you may not know the person, but still there is a very warm smile and then you just greet and say hello, good evening, good afternoon, or whatever. But we have a different here, way in our part of the country. <laughs> here it is very different. You may know the same person, uh, you may know that person, you may be in the lift with that person, but yet, you know, one person will look there, one person will look there. They'll not talk to each other. You know, even a plain greeting, it's it just takes that little step to smile and acknowledge someone else's presence. That itself will keep the younger inner child. Because, see, when we look at a child, especially less than five years, we can't sit like this very seriously. Even when we are in a train or when we are in a plane or in a bus, we cannot just sit like that. The child will just lure that smile of that child that playfulness joyfulness that mischievousness of the child just enthralls us that we are forced to talk so we can keep that child we have to imagine that child we were also once that child but as we grew older we just you know got conditioned into this maturity box and then we are boxed for life yes so just okay, we now move into the final segment of summarizing the talk of the There is one more question, Kamakshi. Yeah, Kamakshi. Yes. Yes, very, Kamakshi. very, yes. very meaningful section, Major. Enjoy very much. Actually, one should love oneself. That is very important. If we don't love ourselves, all others will like us. Eh? And Absolutely. we should, we should always be happy and spread the happiness and try to not to use harsh words. Creating turbulence. Huh? Even some people, by the tone of their voice itself, we make out that uh, they are angry. Huh? So our voice should be polite. And uh, beautiful session, madam. We have to, as you said, you know, once we grow up, uh, so many things come in our mind and uh, we forget that uh, childhood. Thank you Thank so much you. for that. Excellent section. Thank you very much, madam. Huh? Thank you. Thank you. All right, we move in the final segment of summarizing the talk of the thing. Thanks. Uh, do we have more questions? Can we take more questions? Yes, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Saluga, ma. Uh, madam, saluga, uh, bhuvana, madam. 
வர்க்கிங் um only they are with parents and one brother or one sister or one one child so they have no um uh, love and affection or when they are upset they, there is nobody to help so nowadays the generation gap <laughs> it's very different we cannot yeah. comprehend we cannot comprehend with this generation and when uh-huh. i see this generation i'm saying right. those who Every, are let's say less than everyone has now. childhood is very interesting and we enjoy but those days from school friends and relatives who have got so much affection or uh, encouragement uh, pat everything Absolutely. now they are they have to face their vessel so the difference yeah okay, and nice. what you what you rightly said was we had true people we had real mm-hmm. people in our life today Apo, there are more and more atta mama and ellaru irundhu or kuzhandi vandu ella encourage pannuva samadhana paduthuva upset aanalo idu pannuva ipo and kuzhandikku appa amma appa amma rendu perum velai ku poidra appra avaloda worries ava kuzhandita kaatuva kuzhandikku enna padrathu theriyadhu so ella adhu but nalla friends nalla school nalla parents ஹோம் கழிச்சா எல்லாருக்குமே கொஞ்சம் சைல்ட்ஹுட் ரொம்ப இன்ட்ரஸ்டிங்கா இருக்கும் அப்சல்யூட்லி ஐ அம் ஜஸ்ட் गोइंग टू डू a very quick uh, very quick translation uh, what uh, uh, bhuvana madam said is uh, in earlier days there was this joint family system where mm-hmm. uncles and aunts there were so many people who were there to even catch all to help even if the parents got angry like you know to to just be there for the child and not really make the child feel very hurt but uh, in today's generation today where you know both parents are working and then maybe uh, two or one or you know the child is, is not there then it's really very difficult the challenges and what that child is going to grow up 30 years from now 40 years from now god alone knows okay because there is lot of a virtual uh, virtual environment support okay there is lot of bombardment of technology whereas those who grew let's say you know the pre 90s there there was not much of technology or no technology even tv was really really very less so the time that was spent there and the time that is there now there is a very clear divide so we can really consider ourselves those who are you know the pre 90s uh where we enjoyed our life where we seen that side and then we are seeing this transformation it is it is creating a lot of worry but that by worry i don't think there is an answer they have to lead their life we can just be there we can be there to support and uh, you know provide guidance wherever necessary because whatever we speak right now and in terms of guidance it will be okay now so your life has been different you all are all old timers this is what we may get to hear so sometimes we just have to speak only when uh, <laughs> when the need is there when people want advice otherwise silence is golden <laughs> yes anyone else anybody else okay fine we move in the final segment of summarize this talk of protesting order of thanks roman and sir secretary sir bowen do the honors Subramanian sir, please go ahead. Uh, good evening to one and all uh, present. Uh, it was a nice lecture, uh, which has always been whenever uh, Dr. Sudha Srikant talks. Last time she talked about uh, Ikikai. I, all of us had an opportunity to understand what that is all about. Even this morning, there was uh, in our group, something was circulating on ikikai uh, more than ikikai it brought the memories of the lecture she gave us 
uh, and uh, we are we are exceptionally happy to have to have you among us uh, fairly at the regular intervals for which we are very grateful let me get into my business of uh, uh, proposing a word of thanks uh, we started with uh, sri mrs srinidhi aditya uh, telling that wherever she goes and whichever face she says uh, what she says is your face jnananda the guru that is a very high guru vandana with with this we started and uh, uh, mrs vijayalakshmi nagarajan uh, introduced our speaker and uh, she made it very clear how to have cordial and compassionate relationship with oneself i think uh, she summarized the whole talk right at the beginning and uh, a lot has been talked about uh, madam in the past and uh, we uh, you are uh, uh, you know feather is uh, your cap is full of feathers we know that pretty well and uh, uh, you continue to do whatever service you have been doing your commitment is uh, something phenomenal and we just bow down for your patience and dedication madam uh, today's talk we had uh, we have visitors from kerala and germany uh, that's pretty good uh, do you have a inner child yes there is a inner child in all of us uh, those of us uh, who are in the age group she has been talking about Uh, in the popular magazine anand vigadan every week one strip of four pictures of cartoon used to come uh, to show how the child in us works a child will be sleeping very comfortably in the cradle one elderly gentleman will give it a pinch find and satisfaction that is the child in that man a lot of such clippings are there which tells you that there is a child in you always uh, kicking always alive don't try to kill that play with that i think this has been taught to all of us and most of us do follow our mental stability and uh, balance more often than not not is not coming from maturity and structured thinking but our child keeps us alive and laughing smiling to ourselves smiling at the jokes smiling at the environment we are in is all what the child be experience maybe uh, we should live more as a child within us rather than try to put up a stony face as serious people as we saw the uh, in the train in the compartment most of us were stone most of the people were stone face one guy came uh, he started laughing it became contagious and uh, the start, the train was going and moving over to the station and the whole compartment uh, we one one stony face guy and who joined them he also joined the laughter i remember a story long back i have read in tamil in which uh, in a hot sun there will be a bus full of passengers the bus is not starting the driver and the conductor are having the lunch very comfortably because they have driven a long time whereas uh, people are sweating in the heat and uh, you know the type of comment that goes on uh, this is what happens we should be having more commitment to our jobs we should be we should have traveled and taken an alternate uh, form of transportation and people who are better to do telling that they would have been happier traveling on their own but a mother not so rich comes in inside the bus with a 3 year old child which starts playing which starts and jumping around and 
going to other people because some child have they cannot distinguish between the phases and everyone wants to have a child for with them for a few seconds and eventually they forgot that the bus is to start and i am not able to bring the beauty and the style which the writer has written how the presence of a child brought about a metamorphosis in an atmosphere which was tense and people were grumbling and eventually the bus started and went not that it matters the uh, message that was given by the video is one person can make a difference and one child can make a difference i thought that i remembered the story i have shared with you uh, i don't know the relevance of that but all the same as it came to my mind uh, as the laughter and the happiness is contagious uh, we need to look for the opportunity the child when we say it is very playful very joyful it doesn't know many times the child embarrasses the parents by not understanding the controls you give a uh, one child about 4 years came to our place with a visitor we cut apples and gave the child uh, the father and mother said no she does not like the apple at all don't give her the apple she doesn't even eat a piece when my wife had taken them to show around the house the child finished the bowl full of apple i don't know whether to the embarrassment but the child was a child after all the child get discipline as it gets old and slowly uh, the child in us get killed and not that we need to worry about after a few years when we are independent we are able to live our own life uh, we can nurture the child and bring it to life the four pictures what she showed really brought about the type of parenting that takes place and how the child grows the inner child enables healing and uh, playful discovery is possible she just said understanding how you are past trauma affect your present behavior she says the present trauma affect your this thing it is all so deep in us uh, it is very difficult to bring out but all the same if we could bring it out that will be great she was mentioning the grandparents approach to the grandchild is totally different from the parents approach to the child yeah as a grandfather i don't feel any responsibility towards my grandchildren i have a right to play and keep the boy or the girl engaged laugh smile throw the ball here and there break a couple of uh, articles that are kept in the drawing room and protect the child sometimes taking the blame on us but as a father or the mother we are always worried what would be the future of the child because as parent we always live into the future of the child rather than looking at the present situation of the child is nothing wrong i mean all of us feel like uh, flying a kite uh, uh, you know playing marbles sometimes it is all there sometimes we feel shy to do that as to what others would think you need not show yourself to be a immature child but you can find a displacement pleasure uh, for example uh, all of us have played the stones that have been kept and which is called the ganpati which we hit with the stone and bring down the, the stack of stones down but probably the same we do when we go to the bowling when we play the ball and make the pins fall down uh, that's what i feel and uh, increasing the self esteem is very much required and uh, compassion to self is very much required you cannot and many of uh, many of you felt that you scored 10 out of 10 uh, as a child i have been brought under control conditions uh, i will never be giving myself 10 out of 10 because 
I've been taught that humility should be the part and parcel. An American child, uh, even if she knows one word, will tom tom around. Even though we have been taught so many things, the child is told, you must be learning more. That is our oriental culture. Uh, we can't come out of that culture fully well. Uh, uh, that will be with us, and we will try to overcome and bring the child in us. But I think after a certain age, things make difficult. But all the same, I wouldn't say it is impossible. And we have been brought under a situation. Don't ask questions. Follow the rules. Today, the children ask questions. And uh, for my children, answer their children with a lot of patience. And they have the humility to accept that, look, I don't know the reason that I have been following. That has not done any harm to me. But what is the meaning behind it, I do not know. Uh, earlier, before the corona came into the picture, the children were eating with a single spoon, tasting the food of other child. It was pretty common. Subsequently, Quran or Quran or Quran had taught us a lot that whatever HL Patu, I don't know whether I will be able to explain to the total audience whether it will be meaningful. Yes, believing whatever the elders have done has some meaning, will have something, and you can go and dig yourself and find out the reason is the way the children of the earliest era was brought up today. Things are wanted in totally rational way. Uh, should things be rational, all of them? Unfortunately, everything cannot be rational. Even in science, there are irrationality is built in the thing. Even very simple things, if you are those of you who are chemistry students would know the density of the sulfuric acid as you add more water should be going down. But it doesn't. It keeps changing. Those of you who want to see, see can see the chemistry book. It keeps changing. God knows the reason. Sometimes trying to believe that we know the reason for everything may not be right, but reconciling what uh, uh, something needs to be accepted, something needs to be followed, and the wisdom to know the difference is what we need to give our children. Uh, signs of a wounded child, she nicely put, and the frustration. I mean, we are not out of it anyway. Many times, even day before yesterday, I had a long fight with my wife, and we didn't talk for a few hours for a simple thing that happened at night uh, in the morning on the issue of what we should be having for lunch. Uh, uh, there is some amount of ego that is there. The maturity and the child in you comes in when you are able to reconcile and mend up things and go ahead. And it's not very easy to feel all the time rational. And the child in us should be perfectly healthy. I do agree, and I work a lot on that. I read a lot of jokes. I, I mean, when I say hi, lots of people do that, and that is how they keep the child alive. Complaining is a part and parcel of uh, uh, senility, people think. A difficulty in expressing your feeling and express this. Uh, problem most of us experience. Most of the time we are upset. We don't know the reason why we are upset. We are depressed. We can't dig out the reason. After which the depression goes off itself uh, without any rhyme or reason. I haven't been able to probably doing some amount of introspection as Madam suggested will help us in the process. If you back go back to your childhood, relive it, and you take the role of the parent uh, and tell the child in you, this is how things could have been there. A great dialogue, which I would like to practice so that uh, I could bring uh, a much more 
a, a child in me so that I enjoy life. And where to start? Listen to yourself, meditate, uh, build uh, care for yourself. Don't be overcritical. Let a child be mischievous and enjoy your adulthood as a child. And we really enjoyed the lecture, madam. There are a lot of questions. You would like to give answer, probably our introspection and putting ourselves in the process of reconciling to what is there in us will help us live a much more meaningful life. Thanks for making an initiation and walking us, uh, holding our hand. And of course, every lecture of yours have been opening a different vista of uh, thinking in us. And I pray that the process continues. Thanks a lot. And uh, thanks for the Subu for organizing this talk. Bye. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Subramanian, sir, for the wonderful submission as always. Thank you, Suda, for your valuable time. Thank you, Vijayashmi, madam, for the introduction. Thank you, Sidali, for the prayer. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining the show. The recording of this will be uploaded in YouTube sometime tomorrow. I think it will be provided. Kindly share the link as widely as possible. So we are also looking to add some more guest speakers to the existing panel. So if you have anyone interested to join us panel, kindly send the details to me in my WhatsApp number 9836700456. We'll pick it up from there. And that's a wrap up all of us over here. Until we meet next, just wishing you all goodbye, good night, and Shabratri.